Oh, I'm sorry. Core performance. It's all right. Justin and Doug. Don't worry about it. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, like he said, my name is Doug Burr, and this is Justin Lee, and we're from Core Performance. Uh, let me adjust this real quick. We're going to talk to you today about um, improving performance of the military's most important asset, uh, which is its soldiers. Um, now, one of the really interesting things is um, <clears throat> we design, at Core Performance, we design and manufacture heat management and hydration solutions for professional athletes. Uh, currently, our gear is worn by players in, from the NFL to Major League Baseball. But we're especially excited to introduce the capabilities that we can provide for American soldiers, which really gives a performance advantage unlike anything that's ever been seen on the battlefield before. And that's regardless of climate or location. Um, you know, temperature and heat management have been problems that militaries have been trying to solve since the, the dawn of human conflict. Um, if you look at this next slide too, you can see the pictures. Um, see how I get this going. Uh, it's really easy to see why this is such a problem, right? The locations we find ourselves in are hot. The clothing our soldiers wear are hot. The extra kit and weight that they're required to carry traps in heat. And the process of soldiering itself creates body heat. So our soldiers are stressed beyond their body's own capability to cool themselves off. And far too often we find ourselves victims of at least di uh, diminished performance and at worst heat related illness and even sometimes casualties. Now, at Core Performance, we set out to improve athletic performance using heat management techniques, which are taught during TCCC training. Uh, currently, as your body creates heat, it uses sweat and aspiration to remove that heat from your body. But that robs your body of its own natural water supply. For soldiers, this problem is accelerated because of the factors we just looked at environment, clothing, weight, and continued movement, right? So they find themselves quickly dehydrated, needing constant rehydration. So by cooling the soldier, we can actually lower the hydration requirements for each individual soldier. Now, before we talk about exactly how we do that, let's also understand water's role in the body. Water is mission critical for our soldiers. Now, not only does it help with digestion, it protects the spinal cord and your joints, but from an athletic standpoint, it delivers oxygen to the muscles so your body can perform. Not to mention one important concept is it helps remove waste from your body. Now, the really interesting thing about that is for soldiers, we knew if we could find a way to more effectively remove this heat, soldiers could use water more efficiently and we can supercharge their performance. If you look at this slide here really quickly, you can see exactly how much water your body wastes removing heat. In fact, in athletes, it's been shown that up to 75% of wasted energy is because of heat removal. So by being able to shrink how much water is used in the removal process, that gives the body a reservoir to use for its athletic performance. Now, the first way we do that is a solution that we call wearable hydration technology. Now, let me show you how it works. We take these lightweight inserts and we place them at the body's pulse points. What these inserts do is they immediately start absorbing heat directly from your blood before your body wastes its own natural water supply to try to remove the heat. Now, these inserts come in two variations. One is a rechargeable, reusable concept. And the other one, which we recently developed, is a single use on demand capability for field use. Now, simply by integrating this technology into clothing already worn by our soldiers, we can improve individual soldier hydration by 40%. That boost in hydration leads to increased athletic work capacity, power output, improved mental acuity and endurance. And most importantly, we can reduce 
recovery time. Now, because our solution requires no dedicated power, weighs less than one pound, and it doesn't have any uh, restrictions on movement or mobility, it's easily integrated into the current military uniform. After Bill from AUSA contacted us and asked us to present our wearable hydration technology here at GFS, we immediately dove into an extensive investigation to determine what the hydration and cooling needs for the American warfighter were and how they differed from those of a professional athlete. To do that, we went back to our rather extensive network of end users from SOF all the way to a beat cop, and we really tried to dig deep into what these differences were. And our findings were very interesting. We found that based on user feedback, our existing wearable hydration technology, the athletic technology, was already very well suited for training environments such as boot camp or uh, facilities where there was even a modest amount of infrastructure present uh, and other hard sites. However, when we took a look at combat operations and combat support operations, we found that there were some unique challenges that were perhaps best met with combat-specific designs. And we realized that the U.S. military was already providing its personnel with the single greatest weapon to fight heat and dehydration, which, as we mentioned earlier, was water. The trick was that this water was only providing a fraction of its capability to personnel, and that was partly because of the form factor. And water itself is a tremendously powerful weapon, but if you don't use it all the way, then you end up kind of just carrying around dead weight and it's a capacity utilization problem. So we kind of dove back down, looked at, at all of our different issues, and then we tried to figure out how we could make the soldier's water weight much more efficient. Not add anything to the system, not add power, but just be super efficient with what a soldier was already carrying. So we realized that in order to really be this efficient, we had to get water to extract heat in the same way that our wearable hydration technology extracts heat. And in doing so, we could maximize the water's efficiency. So to solve these challenges, we completely reinvented the water bladder and bottled water as we know it from the ground up. And what we've come up with is what our innovators, or our, excuse me, our end users call the ice plate. So I'll show you how the ice plate works here. I'm just going to put on a standard plate carrier. And this is the ice plate. So the ice plate is, like I mentioned, a direct replacement for water bladders and bottled water. It's single use, it's disposable, and it holds between 32 and 64 ounces of water in this package, which as you can tell, is shaped very similar to an ESAPI plate. So a user takes it and slides it right underneath their plate carrier. In doing so, we're providing conductive contact with the skin to absorb a tremendous amount of heat between 140 and 200 watts from the body in frozen uh, format. Now, one of the consistent pieces of feedback we got during our end user interviews was that there was a practice already in place of taking bottled water uh, at a fob and freezing it and then sticking it in the sides of plate carriers before you'd go out on patrol or your pants pockets, anywhere you could stick water, uh, frozen water, you would do it. So what we're doing with the ice plate is e replicating that behavior exactly except we're doing so in a form factor that's infinitely more friendly, approachable, and functional. And we're providing a utility for water that's never been seen before. As soon as you put the ice plate in, it gets to work immediately and absorbs excess heat from the body. As I mentioned, uh, at least 140 watts of cooling power, which is tremendous. The Army's been trying to chase this sort of target for some time now, but in doing so, it usually has discovered solutions that require power. This requires no power, has no moving parts, and in many cases is much, much lighter than the existing solutions that carry water. So we're about 50% lighter than a traditional hydration bladder, and as you can see from the side profile, 75% thinner. So this means that those awkward sitting positions where the, the hydration bladder forces you forward in a vehicle are a thing of the past. And because we're combining hydration and cooling, we're able to maximize 
the efficiency of the water weight already carried in a way that's never been done before. The cooling and the hydration com combination will give the Army the ability to give its warfighters an unmatched and unparalleled environmental capability to not only supercharge performance, but with this much power, literally remove environment as a constraint for operations. Uh, one quick little slide here. We had a little um, breakdown of how the ice plate compares to both water bottles and hydration bladders. Um, and one thing that it has that no other uh, current solution has, which Justin mentioned, is the heat extraction. So the interesting thing is both our wearable hydration technology and the ice plate create better hydrated, better performing soldiers. What that means is our soldiers can train harder. It means they can work safer and they can remain active in combat in situations where heat used to be a limiting factor. The US military now has the opportunity to provide extended capabilities for its most important asset the individual warfighter. Thank you, guys. Okay, you're not going to get up that easily. <laughs> because, you know, I've, I've spent some time with you guys. Yep. I like you guys. Uh, so could you please talk about, we, we talked about the logistics challenge and not only the, the bottles, but can you tell me about additional endeavors you're doing as far as the, the cooler container and, 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 and having how many you can pack into a cooler, yeah. and what are the current con ops that are being used in, in the fight? Yeah, uh, and Justin will speak to this too. Uh, he'll give you some specifics. But if you think about one of the problems that bottled water has is, you know, uh, even though it's currently being used in coolers, it doesn't stack very well, right? It, it's not optimized for space. But the ice plate, which Justin can hold up and show you, is the only true stackable option to put into a cooler. Um, and, and that's important because it allows users to carry with them between 8 and 12% more water for the same cube space in, in a cooler. So if you think about it intuitively, what we're doing is we're actually reducing the water requirement for soldiers because we're absorbing heat so they can carry less water. We're providing them a more efficient mechanism to drink cooler water as it melts and we're allowing them to be able to carry with them more water at one time. So it truly is extended capabilities all over the place. Quick question for you. Yeah. If, if you're out on patrol, if you're out on uh, operation, and you don't have the opportunity to replace it with a, a new frozen pack, if you just replace it with water, does, do you still gain the, the efficiencies that you talked about or some sort of efficiencies? Yeah, a absolutely. So uh, you want to speak to this? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Colonel. So if you don't have an opportunity to, you, to replace your, your discharge plate with a fully charged plate, you can put in a non-charged plate and you still have a net weight savings and a net profile uh, reduction. So the soldier is still better off. There's really no condition in our interviews with end users that we were able to find where the end user was worse off for selecting uh, the ice plate. They were only net positive. Uh, so the, in terms of the physiological benefits, there will still be some heat absorption that takes place when you have water present next to the body in a conductive capacity. It will not be quite as intense as the transition from ice to water. That phase change right there is where you get most of the energy reduction and absorption capacity. But one of the things that we did do in the design is we ensured that the form factor fit into what we found were the most common carriage and transport mechanisms. So uh, the, almost 100% of our respondents and interviewees told us that they like to carry their water on their gun trucks or their or strikers or whatever uh, in 24 packs of 33 ounce bottled water. So what we did in, in engineering the ice plate, the stackable geometry that Doug had mentioned is you'll see there's, I don't know if you can see this, but there's positive and negative reliefs on the ice plate itself facilitating the stacking. That stacking is what yields the increased volume for the given cube space of 24, 33 ounce bottles in a, in a case, essentially. So you can still carry a lot of them. And then the other mechanism that we got a lot of feedback was that 
Yeti coolers were very popular, and so these were designed to stack denser in a Yeti cooler than the equivalent 33 ounce bottle. Are you able to refill those on the? Uh, so if, if they're out of patrol and can't get to another frozen one, they can refill that with a, from another water source. Absolutely, yes, sir. So that's that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. So the the top of the ice plate actually has a screw top. So though it's designed to be single use and recyclable or disposable, depending on the operational requirements of the end user, they can undo the top and they can slide in either electrolyte and dextrose charged tablets, which will dissolve into the water solution and provide even more capability, or they can refill it from an external water source and continue to enjoy the benefit of the form factor. Great, thank you. One thing, too, I, I want to uh, comment real quick on his first question I think is important to understand, too, is um, the, the benefits of heat extraction don't stop when the heat is done being extracted, right? So every minute you wear something that can extract heat is, is a more efficient minute. But what it also does, as you, show, as you saw on the slide with retaining water, is it makes every minute later more efficient and your body working more capable as well. So anytime uh, a soldier is replacing a bladder, even with a non-frozen one, they're in a better position than they would have been without it, kind of thing. Great, awesome. You answered my question. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so, great, right, yep. One more. Um, so, if, if I, sorry, two. <laughs> <laughs> got to follow the tall guy. Yeah, that's okay. I do it to him all the time. Don't work. Feel it. Yeah. <laughs> if I've got the if so I've got the plate, I've got it on. You how many pounds are you adding? Zero. Zero. It's it's, it's yeah, it actually, by wearing this instead of the traditional high hydration bladder, you're actually shedding even more than 50% of the hydration bladder's weight. And when I'm, I take that out of the box, it's, it's frozen. Yep. Do you have any mechanism? Because a lot of times what happens is I'm on a mission, I'm out there, I grab my stuff, I got to get in a vehicle, mm -hmm. and then I got to ride for a while. So when I put it on, I'm not really stressed in the vehicle. I mean, I'm still generating heat, but I don't want to feel cold. I want to. I'd be happy to get rid of the excess heat, not the heat I'm kind of keeping warm and comfortable with. <laughs> sure. But if I stick a plate of ice against me, that's eh, a little brisk. If, is there some way to moderate the, the heat loss process so that I don't freeze in the vehicle and then run out of heat, you know, uh, heat loss when I get, get to the mission what's really making me hot? Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's a great question. And actually, I think there's kind of two questions in there, really, right? So the the first question is, uh, if I, if I'm hearing you correctly, is what do I do if I'm in my vehicle and I don't have access to a cooler? Is that essentially what you're saying? I got it. I got Yep. Don't wear the plate. Don't wear the plate, right? But so the the simple answer is, if you have a cooler in the truck, you don't put the plate on until you dismount. That's, that's why I see it's a two-part question. Yeah, some, some vehicles are not that. I'm, I'm just, what I'm trying to get at is maybe is there some way to moderate the heat loss between my yeah. body and the plate, assuming that not everything is either way too stinking hot or way too cold. Yeah, sure. So that's a, that's a great question. So under most circumstances, the combat shirt itself, especially FR combat shirts, provide a sufficient level of modulation. If increased modulation is desired by the end user, it ships with a sleeve that you can use to provide an additional layer of insulation that's then disposable and it doesn't even weigh an ounce so it, it it's net zero yeah um and sort of one additional capability that uh, uh bill and i have talked about many times actually all of us is um the interesting thing about energy transfer is is it is it work both it works both ways right so in cold environments I, we designed our, our athletic apparel um, to, to have mesh pockets. So you can throw everyday off the shelf hand warmers in there, let the air help the iron oxide reaction, and my blood will actually absorb the heat and I can circulate warmer blood so I don't lose dexterity 
in my appendages as well. So it, it, it's really an interesting concept because we, we can, and the ice plate works exactly the same way. Um, some of the interviews that, that Justin had um, with, uh, w yeah, yeah, he, he can talk, so, speak to this a little. Uh, going to the, the versatility of the device, we spent a lot of time with 18 Deltas telling us about one of their main challenges was going around to guys when they were at a, a cold post or, or an, an icy conditions or snowy conditions and actually getting them to drink their water because their hydration needs didn't really change even though intuitively we're like oh it's cold I don't need more water but physiologically you still need quite a bit of water under exertion so these guys told us they had to go around to their guys about every hour was the common data point and say, hey, remember to, you got to hydrate, you got to hydrate. And the feedback they would get, the pushback actually they would get was, we don't want to drink the water because it's on the outside and it's freaking cold. And if we drink more of this, it's going to go right to our core and make us colder. So no thanks. The feedback we got from these guys was, we love the ice plate because the body is going to keep the water at a temperature where my guys will actually drink it and digest it and I don't have to fight against them to stay hydrated in cold environments. Now that's if you just use the ice plate in a naked capability.